the exam as it currently exists, it'll be modified slightly. What kind of data type is that? Without knowing anything else about it, what's that? Integer. That's an integer. Could be a long integer. What about something like that? That is not a float. Excuse me, that is not an int because it has a decimal place. It's a float or a double. I'm about to, like, I don't know anything about code. Right. What about that? What about that? What is that? String. That's a string. It doesn't matter that it's a number. It's a string. What if it's the word false or true? A boolean? That's a boolean, which in this language is abbreviated bool. So let's uh, just put that that's an int. That's a float. That's a string. One more type. What if it had single quotes around it? Like that. That's a care. All right, we've done way too many of these PIMDAS problems. I'm going to skip them off. All right, what does a percent sign do? That's a modulus. That's modulus, which takes the remainder. What about the pound sign, the hash? What does that do? That usually is with include, isn't it? That begins a preprocessor directive, of which the most common one is pound sign include. Remember the term preprocessor directive because I don't put in parentheses like include. Preprocessor directive. I'll put the ex example include here in the notes. You got two of these guys. Which one sends output to a stream? Which one receives input from a stream? Yeah, the arrows show which way it's going. So that would be output. This would be input. If you have this, C is equal to 0, then C++, plus plus, and then C out C, what's that going to print? That's going to print 1. And what is this plus plus called? There's a specific name for that operator. Increment. Increment. You got it. There's also decrement. Minus, minus. All right, I'm going to read you a definition now and just ask if you can figure it out. What symbol or symbols define, not deform, define a block of code? For example, encloses the statements that makes up the main function. Did I hear it? Braces. Braces. Curly braces define a block of code. I never know what to call them braces or brackets. Yeah, I think the brackets are those and these are the braces. Anyways, it'll be, uh, you know, matching. So it'll, it won't ask you whether they're brackets or braces. It'll actually show you the curly brace. In that case, what are parentheses used for? Yeah, they have two purposes. They enclose the parameters or arguments of a function, like where you see main parentheses and parentheses, and also they group parts of an expression, like PIMDAS. So, for example, if you do C out POW, 3 to the power of 2, what are the parentheses doing there? They are enclosing the arguments of a function. Arguments are when you call it. These are arguments because we're calling the POW. When you write your own function, that's when you call them parameters. Parameters are the variables that receive those arguments. If you have something like this, a is e x is equal to 1 plus 2, whatever, you know. What are the parentheses doing there? They're grouping parts of an expression. So it does both.
If you're a Python programmer, slash slash means something completely different than what it does in C. What does it do in C? A That's a comment. And if you want a multi-line comment, you do that. You put a slash star and then all your comments and then a star slash. Give me some examples of keywords. Keywords are the grammar that make up the language. And by the way, the, the preprocessor directives, like pound sign include, are actually not keywords. But we've seen some keywords. If, while, for, double, int, long, long. That's actually a variable. If we uh, look at this, everything that's in blue, and I lied, it's uh, actually counting pound sign include as a keyword, but it's really not. Using namespace, int, double, long, int, all of those are the keywords. What about C out? POW 3 to the power of 2. Is POW a keyword? It's a function. Right, it's a function call. It's not a keyword. In this case, besides A being a variable, what's another name for what A is? I'll give you the answer. It's called an identifier. But in parentheses, I put variable and function names. Identifiers are words that you get to choose. We get to pick the variable names. If we write our own function, like if we come up here and write a new function that returns an int, and we call it my int, like that, we got to pick that name. It's an identifier. Inside that function, we might have a variable. Fred. Fred is a variable name. It's an identifier. So identifiers are function names and variable names. The comparison operators. If x is equal to 3 or 4 and y is equal to 3, then what is x greater than y? What is x less than y? Stuff like that. What is x equal equal to y? What is x not equal to y? So let's just top, top, pick them from the top. Is x greater than y? Yes. Yeah, so that evaluates to true. Is x less than y? That's false. How about that? Are they equal? No. no, that's false. And so not equal means that those are true. Right. What kind of questions are these? Will they be fill in the blank or will they be multiple choice? All the above. <laughs> multiple choice for the vast majority of them. I don't okay. do very many fill in the blanks. Well, I don't think. I don't think I've run into any fill in the blanks unless, yeah, I, I asked for a code fragment. Or unless I just asked you to type the value, you know, five. So you have comparison operators, you have arithmetic operators, if I could spell. You have the logical operator or we have talked about that, right? Or is that a chapter four thingy that we haven't really talked about yet? And the logical operator and. I think chapter four thing. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you, but then I need to remember to take it off the exam. And in this language is represented by two ampersand signs. And the way it works is something like this. If A is less than three, and A is greater than B. And means both sides of this have to be true in order for the whole expression to be true. Or 
is it represented by two vertical bars like that. That means only one side or the other has to be true. They can both still be true, but so if we did this, if x is less than 3 and a greater than b, c out, hello, whatever, and then we did this one, c out, goodbye. These both would have to be true. x would have to be less than 3 and a would have to be greater than b for it to print hello. But for it to print goodbye, it would print goodbye if x was less than 3 or if a was greater than b. Only one of those has to be true. And going back, if our arithmetic operators are things like plus, minus, times, and divide, what are the comparison operators? That, that, that These are these guys, yeah. Equal equals, not equals, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. If I ask you how to do this, I am sure you know how to do it. Declare an int named height. Display a message that says, what is your height? Read that number into a variable named h. Display your height is, miraculously, since they just typed it in, followed by h. You can do that. We've been doing that all along, right? C I N, C out. So you would type I N T space H. That declares the variable. Now we've done that part. Display a message. How do we display a message? C out. C out. What is your height? Now we need to read that back in. What are we going to do? C N. And then now we're going to display, so we need C out again. Your height is followed by H. If I ask you for a code snippet, don't go crazy and write a main and some pound sign includes up at the top unless I very specifically ask for that. Skipping ones that look way too much like what we just did on the quiz. What are the three components of a variable? This is kind of more of a beginning programming. A variable has three parts, really. It has a value. What else does a variable have? If I do this, a is equal to 3. 3 is the value, but what else do we know about the variable? We know its name. Its name is a, and its data type. So every variable has those three components, a value, a name, and a data type. I'm not going to ask a question based specifically on that, but just keep that tucked away in your brain. You know that every variable has a name. Every variable has a, a value, and behind the scenes it has a data type. And in this language, we have to declare all of our variables before we use them, unlike a lot of scripting languages. If I have this statement, x is equal to 2 times 3. What is the operators and what are the operands? Asterisk, is that an operator or an operand? Operator. That's an operator, which means that two and three are what? Operand. Those are operands, right? Operands are the things that get fed to the operator. Multiply x upon these two pieces of data. Those two pieces of data are the operands.
valid and invalid variable names. Is this a valid variable name? Sales tax 2011. Can't think of a reason why that's invalid. What if it said 211 sales tax? Is that a valid variable name? And the answer is no, because a variable cannot begin with a number. Numbers are great, just can't start it. What if it said sales tax is equal to 3? Yeah, you can't have a space. It thinks that those are two different words. So no spaces must start with a non-digit, can have underscores. The book says no dollar signs. I have to check it every single time. Let's just go with that. Other special symbols like percent sign, pound sign, things like that, those aren't going to work as variable names. So you can't say sales, tax, percent, because it thinks it's going to start doing modulus at that point. If something is a binary operator, what does that mean? I'll give you a hint. It doesn't mean it's got zeros and ones in it, although that's the other use of the word binary we use. What else does binary mean? It means two. Yeah, it means two, two states. So a binary operator is an operator like plus or minus or multiply or divide that accepts two operands. There's also a unary operator. There's not very many of those, but A++, plus plus, it only took one operand. Also minus three, you know. A equals minus 3. That minus is actually an operator that flips that 3 to being a negative symbol, although we just think of all that as being one thing. So a unary operator, unho meaning 1, binary meaning 2. There's the ternary operator. Ternary operator is also known as the conditional operator. That's when you have a question mark involved. If you have this, temperature is equal to 10. State is equal to, is the temperature less than 32? If it is, then the state is ice, else it is not ice. Once this runs, the value of that variable is going to equal either that or that based on this expression. Is temperature less than 32? Yep, so what is state going to be? It's going to copy the first thing into it. If temperature was not less than 32, if it was 40, then is this expression sure? Nope, so that means that the second thing gets copied into it. So the question mark is known as the ternary operator. It's ternary meaning three. I don't think I asked for the definition of the ternary operator, but I might give you something like that. You could do x is equal to 3, y is equal to 4, and then you could write z is equal to is x less than 0, question mark, 1, else, no wait, negative 1, colon, positive 1. I'm going to get rid of that y. That's <coughs> not necessary there. What is z going to equal? Is this true? Is x less than 0? No. So is it going to equal the first thing after the question mark or the second? Oh, the second thing. It's going to equal the second thing. So when this runs, z will then equal 1. one. However, if x equaled negative 3, then this expression would be true. So z would equal negative 1. Well, let's just write that down. If the expression in front of question mark is true, z equals the value, the first value, the value before the colon. If the expression is false, z equals the value after it. And the uh, book gives you some weird examples. You can actually execute code as well as just passing values. 
you could do this, and I think that this is abominable. X is less than zero. If that's true, I want you to do cookie. Else I want you to do cake. Like that. If this was true, then it would execute that code. Else it would execute that code. Now I think that's a hideous misuse of the ternary operator and a lot of languages don't support that. They only support making an evaluation and passing it across, but whatever. I'm not going to ask you that. I will ask you something like that. What to do next? The vast majority of y'all are going to make an A. Just saying. Alrighty, the rest of the PowerPoints haven't been uploaded. I was going to hit 4 real fast. I don't see 4. I think we're going to call it a day. But I'm going to take roll, prove that we're all here.